right, last week we did cereal seed treatments, so this week let's do pulses. So we're going to start off once again with this seed sample from 2020 Seed Labs. So this was a sample of peas right out of the Lethbridge area here. And you can see we got uh, germination in 90%, 9 abnormals, and 1 dead, and that is due to mechanical damage. That is fairly normal for peas. They're a little bit delicate when they get run through augers multiple times, and they can get damaged quite easily. Uh, total vigor 85%, so we lost 5% between the vigor and the germ. And uh, as far as diseases go, we got Ascochyta 1.5% and 3% stem philium. So Botrytis here, we got zero. This would be a bigger concern in lentils, this disease, than it is in peas, but can still cause significant damage to peas. And Thracnose, uh, Fusarium root rot, white mold, and uh, the stem philium down here, of course. So this one isn't overall too terribly bad, but uh, the vast majority of people do not get a fungal screen done on their pea samples. It is much more commonly done on cereal diseases than it, or on cereal samples than it is on peas. But uh, according to 2020 Seed Labs, the results they've been seeing from this year are indicating that to the east of our area, like eastern Alberta Medicine Hat and Saskatchewan area, there is the ascochyta numbers have come way up from last year. Some samples coming in as high as 35%, and botrytis is uh, very, very high as well, especially in lentils. So that is something to keep in mind when you're deciding whether you're going to use a seed treatment or not. And as far as soil-borne diseases go, there's quite a few that affect both peas and lentils and chickpeas. We've got Rhizoctonia, Fusarium, Pythium, Common Root Rot, Aphanomyces and Botrytis and they can all move pretty rapidly through a seed row and if you don't have any seed treatment on there that's why it's quite common to see 5 to 20 percent seedling mortality. Using a seed treatment you can reduce that quite a bit like you can get it down to that 5 percent which is going to save you quite a bit of weight on seed. Pea seed is uh, fairly heavy to transport around everywhere. So if you've never heard of a Phantomyces before, here's a good picture slide from Sigma Chatterton. So healthy over here on the left, and you can see the roots get that dark caramel color, and as the infection gets more severe, they just die right off. So this is about as bad as it gets. It'll prevent a lot of guys from growing pulses, especially out into that Saskatchewan or farther north in Alberta, where the soil pH allows the disease to take over. And uh, once you have it, it's pretty hard to get rid of. And the only effective treatment for it is uh, made by a new farm. It's called Intigo Solo. And uh, it is effective at suppressing it. Not full control, but it'll suppress it. All right, so this week we'll switch things up. We'll let BSF go first. So this is Insure Pulse. This is their kind of standalone product for this. It's got uh, three different groups of fungicide in there, including Zemium, which is a really good systemic, and the group 11 pyroclostrobin, which works similar to a growth regulator. The strobes will kind of increase your metabolic rate, which will help help with early growth and get it up out of the ground quick. Uh, can be applied on field peas, lentils, and chickpeas, as well as flax. And uh, it pretty much controls or suppresses most of our diseases, with the exception of the aphanomyces. Comes in a couple different size options. And uh, very good product. Here's some nice side-by-side -side pictures. We've got more lentils emerged under fusarium disease pressure here. Uh, flax, you can see a massive, massive boost in emergence. So for you flax growers out there, this this is shown. You can actually reduce your seeding rate by 20 to 30 percent when you apply this. So the seed treatment will pay for itself with your reduced seeding cost. And uh, field peas, of course, uh, we're showing some, some difference there with under botrytis pressure. So very good product, wouldn't shy away from this one at all. And it can be mixed with Cruiser for insecticide control or the new Lumivia from Corteva. All right, and for number two, we've got Bayer's Trilex Evergold. So I actually really like this one in lentils myself. Um, it's got three different groups of fungicide in there, 7, 11, and 4, including the active with the funnest name to pronounce, Penflufen, one of my favorites. All right, it also has the group 11. It's got the trifloxystrobin in there, so it gives you that growth boost, just like the, uh, the BSF option does as well. Basically controls the same labeled diseases, and... Uh, yeah, comes in a couple different container sizes, um, shows uh, yield increase over untreated. Compatibility chart is in here with your inoculants. If you're putting on a peat or a liquid, this is very important information to know. Uh, it's got Excite Bio in here too, which is nice to see. We've really seen good results with this product here last year. 
and mixing instructions down here and that is about it on this so i've actually i've had pretty good luck with this on especially on lentils but uh, it's a very good pea product as well and of course bayer recommends that it be treated with stress shield as well to control wireworms and pea leaf weevil in peas uh, wireworm in lentils usually the pea leaf weevil isn't a serious problem on lentils Now from Syngenta we have Cruiser Max Vibrance. You can also get it as Vibrance Max without the Cruiser or you can get it as Vibrance Max with Intego to control your Aphanomyces. So this is going to be very similar to the Raxel and to the Insure Pulse for the diseases that it controls. It's going to pretty much control everything, suppression on Fusarium and uh, no effect really on the uh, Aphanomyces. So it's got three different fungicides in here, plus your insecticide in this case, which is a Themethoxum. So that'll get you control in your pea leaf weevils and wireworms. It's registered on uh, peas, lentils, and chickpeas. Uh, here's your, your application information. Your tank mix is basically just call and check for your inoculant compatibility and how many hours it's going to be safe on the seed. And that is about it for this one. So very good product, very widely used. Uh, commercial applicators really love this product. It goes on pretty easy. And from Arista, we have Vitaflow 280. So this is a two-part fungicide in here. We've got the Carbathin and Thyrum. So we have a contact fungicide and a systemic fungicide in here, and it's going to be pretty effective at uh, controlling most of your seed and soil-borne fung fungal diseases. Uh, no effect on Aphanomyces at all, so you have to mix it with the Intego for that. And as far as insecticides go, it's pretty much compatible with everything. So Stress Shield, Cruiser, and Lumivia. Uh, the unique thing about this is you can pretty much apply this on everything. So you can put it on wheat, barley, peas, pulses, rye, even flax, and corn. Now for peas, you're going to want to make sure you're at that 330 mil rate just to get your Ascochyta control. But uh, overall, if uh, programming isn't attractive to you, this is a really good option. And uh, Arista will also be announcing a new pulse seed treatment here this spring, but I can't talk about it now because it is not registered yet at this time. We are still waiting on that. And from New Farm, we have Indigo Solo. So you've heard me talk about this one a few times already. So this is basically an essential if you are trying to grow pulses in an area that has a fan of mice in the soil. So pretty much effective on all of our pulse crops. It's a group 22. There's no dye pack in this because it's designed to go with other seed treatments. So if you're going to apply this alone, it needs to have a dye added to it. Very low use rate. It's about 5 mils per bushel, which is very, very little. And uh, it is also effective on Pythium root rot. It's actually the only group 22 that is effective on Pythium. So it gives us a little bit of a resistance management on that and uh, really a very very good product and it's compatible with every other fungicide seed treatment on the market so it doesn't matter which main seed treatment you want to go with you can add Intego to it to uh, to get that control and from Corteva we once again have Lumivia CPL so this is going to be your standalone insecticide seed treatment you can add to other fungicides and it's going to give us protection not against not just against wireworms and pea leaf weevil but also cutworm and armyworm technically also grasshoppers but there shouldn't be too many of them up within 35 days of seeding your peas so the active ingredient once again is chlorantril and prol and uh, it's uh, a very unique insecticide it's going to have basically no effect on non-target bugs it's only going to target bugs that are actually feeding on the seed or on the vegetation so you can see we got increased efficiency on wireworms we got control of cutworms and armyworms um, pretty effective on cutworms and wheat and on lentils and on peas so this should be a really good product. Corteva is supporting it mixed with all the other fungicides on the market, but they might not necessarily support it on their end. So before you're applying it to a Syngenta or Bayer product, you should be following up with those reps to make sure that they have done internal testing on their end. They should have uh, some results in the next couple weeks anyways. I'm quite excited to see how this product works out for us this year. Uh, I've had some bad problems in the Lethbridge and West area with cutworms in peas the last couple of years, so I'm excited to see how this one works. And of course, when it comes to pulses, the main insect that we're going to be concerned about is going to be the pea leaf weevil. So this little guy, he comes out of uh, alfalfa, rangeland, weedy areas in the spring, 
can uh, travel up to several miles when they smell a pea field to get to it. And the first thing they do is they mate and they lay eggs at the base of the plant. And then these uh, lovely little white maggots hatch out of those eggs. And they go down and they feed on the nodules as the nodules are forming on the roots. So that's going to affect your nitrogen uptake which will severely stunt and damage your yield. The adults will feed on the leaves and you'll see these trademark notches there. And by the time you see that, those eggs are pretty much already laid. So going in with something like Silencer or Matador, anything like that, and spraying these guys after you've seen this damage is basically at this point, it's revenge spraying. The damage is already done. They've already laid those eggs and there's nothing you can do about the damage that's going to be done underground. So and that's why an insecticide on your seed treatment for peas is so important. I don't think there's a forecast map out for 2020 yet, but this was the result of their survey from the 2019 year. So you can see down here around this Lethbridge area and east, we've got definite hot spots of activity where the visual feeding above ground on the plants was quite high. Usually anything over three would be considered like your action threshold. So and then up by Edmonton, of course, again, we've got a real hot spot there. I think overall the numbers for us last year in this area were actually down a little bit from normal probably because of how severely cold we were I think there was some pretty good winter kill activity on them but with the weather that we've had so far this winter I wouldn't expect really hardly any winter kill at all this year unless we get probably two weeks of minus 30 yet. And we can't talk about seeding peas without at least touching on pulse inoculants so if for some reason you're not a farmer and you're watching this video, inoculants are basically a beneficial bacteria that colonize the roots and create these nice little nodules here on the root which fixate nitrogen. So the more of them and the bigger they are, technically the more nitrogen you can get into that plant, you can drive yield a little harder. It's uh, pretty risky these days to, uh, to not use an inoculant. You're, uh, you're setting yourself up for reduced yield. So we've got three main categories. We've got granular, liquid, and peats and they are not all the same I'm kind of lumping them all together here just to get through it quick but uh, feel free to email or talk to me if you have further questions on any of these here but uh, granular is going to be your most common form of inoculant delivered right into the seed row with the seed it's going to be a little bit more material to handle usually three to five pounds per acre and it's going to give you the best chance of survival of your inoculum in the dry soil conditions so popular brands of this that we carry is Nodulator XL or Duo, Lalum and Duo Spherical Granule, which is new on the market this year and looks very promising, Tag Team P and Lentil, uh, Celtec, which is more of your uh, your bargain option, and Verdesian Primo GX2 Granular, which is a, a very good product, as well as Active Pulses. Now we start to move into our liquids. So these are going to have a little bit reduced survivability in dry soils. You're going to have to consult with your seed treatment uh, compatibility chart to determine your compatibility and your planting window for how long it's going to actually survive with the seed treatment. So these are going to be applied directly on the seed or could be injected in row through a, uh, a seed drill with a liquid kit on it. And they're pretty cheap and easy to apply. So these are going to be things like your Excite Bio Pulse Rhizo, Liquifix Liquid, Verdesian Intake Liquid, Active Rhizo Liquid, Celtic Liquid, and Tag Team Liquid. And for peats, they're going to be somewhat similar to, to liquids as far as it's going to be fairly cheap and easy to apply. It's going to be directly on the seed, but you can put this on dry or as a slurry. So once again, you're going to have to consult with your seed treatment compatibility chart. Uh, it's going to be another really good way to double inoculate if you want to really push that yield. And uh, these are mostly going to be your nodulator XLs, your legume fix powder, tag team, cell tech, Verdesian Ender Peat and N Charge Peat, as well as Egg to Pulses Powder. So, all in all, this is a, a fairly good way to go, but uh, I recommend this these generally to be used in conjunction with the granular. I hope this information was of use to you, and if you need more information on seed treatments or inoculants, don't hesitate to call the office and talk to Lyle, Harv, or Gary.